2023 was a record-breaking year for Las Vegas. A Formula One race, the $2.3 billion entertainment venue, The Sphere, the 67-story, $3.7 billion Fontainebleau Resort, a sold-out Adele residency, the list goes on. And on February 11th, 2024, Las Vegas will host the biggest sporting event of the year, Super Bowl 58. Las Vegas has changed. I think the country has changed. And I think that is all reflected in the big event that's coming here. They're seeing it more than just the Strip now. They're seeing it as a place that is great for everything else. 38.8 million visitors spent a record-breaking $44.9 billion in 2022, a 24.7% increase from the previous record set in 2019. 2023 spending remains to be reported, but is expected to beat out the previous year because of the city's new entertainment offerings. Total visitor numbers for the year climbed to 40.8 million. But as investors pour billions into making Sin City an elite destination, some real challenges lay ahead. Real estate prices have increased by more than 40% since pre-pandemic levels. A city that has no water availability cannot grow. The nature of Las Vegas is very unusual in terms of how it's a tiny island of privately held land in a vast ocean of federal land. This is executive chef Sonny Hibaj and his daughter, Juni. In 2021, the family traded New York for Las Vegas after Hibaj received a business proposal to help open a restaurant. The offer changed his life. Before this, I didn't see Juni except practically on weekends. You got everything, Juni. And your banana. I wasn't looking at leaving New York at the time. It turned into, I wanted to stay in Vegas. Uh, I liked being out here in Vegas. It was a very different atmosphere than New York. Between 2012 and 2022, Las Vegas' population increased by 18%. That's considerable when compared to an area like Los Angeles County, whose population actually decreased in the same period. Las Vegas' growth and development have been not just remarkable, but exponential. The census of 1900 showed a population here of about 30. The population doubled or almost doubled with every census of the 20th century. In 1931, Nevada became the first state to legalize gambling, transforming Las Vegas from a mining town to a gambling mecca. Throughout the following decades, organized crime took control of most casinos. The casino was the profit center, and everything fed into it. Frank Sinatra, as great as he was, was so popular in Las Vegas in part because he attracted high-rolling gamblers. After the mob was driven out in the 80s, other forms of development began to arrive, like the birth of the city's restaurant and entertainment scene. Tourists flocked as the city diversified its revenue streams beyond gambling and so did blue-collar workers. With the expansion of buildings comes an expansion of the number of people. At one time, there was an estimate that every new hotel room created four to five jobs. With its hundreds of casinos and nightclubs, Las Vegas has long been linked with debauchery and fun, offering everything from A-list DJs and singers to comedians, magicians, and even a modern circus. But over the past few years, the city turned to something new, going from zero professional sports teams to becoming a sports haven. The $500 million gamble on the Formula One race in November 2023 brought in $1.2 billion to the area. The race will return in 2024. In 2020, NFL team the Raiders relocated into the brand new $2 billion Allegiant Stadium, an investment that's seen the biggest return. The total economic impact generated by 1.52 million incremental visitors exceeded $2.29 billion, including $128 million in tax revenue in 2023. Having the sports industry here changes the brand of our city, uh, opens it up for future growth, and 
you know, really puts us on a track for prosperity. Other sports additions have paid off in other ways, like championships. The $500 million NHL expansion team, the Golden Knights, won the Stanley Cup in 2023. WNBA team, the Las Vegas Aces, won back-to-back -back titles in 2022 and 2023. Typically, about 25% of the population is not interested in coming to Las Vegas. But when you add their sports team, they think differently about it. 2023 numbers remain to be seen, but in 2022, sporting events generated $1.8 billion in economic activity from out-of-town visitors to Vegas. On February 11th, 2024, Las Vegas will become the center of the U.S. sporting world when it hosts Super Bowl 58, a hefty expense at $60 million. What hosting the Super Bowl means is that, first of all, the NFL has accepted that Las Vegas is a suitable place. About 20 years ago, our Convention and Visitors Authority tried to buy ad time on the Super Bowl, and the NFL rejected it. The event is expected to draw 330,000 people and bring in $700 million to the city. It is an opportunity for us to show off, and Allegiant Stadium has been a game changer because of that. But it's not only sports. And not everything is paying off, at least not right away. The Sphere reported a $100 million loss in its first earnings. Over the years, Las Vegas has become a notable culinary destination, boasting celebrity chefs and Michelin stars while catering to both the budget conscious and the high rolling. Everyone's gonna be working, putting in their extra hours, making sure we get, we take care of everyone we can and giving them the best experience because we want them to come back as soon as possible. For Hebaj, the decision to move is marked by a lot of pros, like a shorter commute. I'm able to take her to school every morning, get home sometimes before she's asleep, so I'll see her both morning and night. A lower cost of living is another one. The Las Vegas metro area topped real estate company Redfin's list as the most popular destination for relocating home buyers in 2023. The median home price for the area is $424,000, which is attractive when comparing that of Los Angeles, where most new residents are coming from, or New York, where Hebaj moved from. The average home in Miami, Florida, which is often compared with this city, sells for $150,000 more than in Las Vegas. Job opportunities are another pro. While Las Vegas' unemployment rate is above the national average, it's at a pre-pandemic low. In 2023, it was one of the top metro areas with the greatest positive changes in employment for the year. Its proximity to national parks and a national hub like Los Angeles adds another appeal. But the state's tax laws are one of its biggest draws. Nevada lacks a state income tax, does not tax its businesses, and the property taxes it does require are low. Las Vegas is a low operating cost. When you look at your net income, every piece of overhead expense is a big deal. So Las Vegas just wins against most states. Las Vegas is the leading destination for California businesses looking to relocate, with over 2,000 moving to Sin City between 1990 and 2019. Hollywood studios have flirted with the idea of moving there as well. The existing Nevada film tax credit is worth $15 million per year. On top of that, many tech companies are expanding their reach in Las Vegas, like Google, who doubled its initial $600 million investment in a data center by adding another $600 million in 2020. I think that Las Vegas is changing in the sense that if you are looking for a well-paying high-tech job, we're having more of them. This is the center of the world for gaming and tourism. There are a lot of opportunities in that industry that include tech jobs. Las Vegas has become globally renowned as a top shopping destination, from luxury shops to centers and outlets, but not without some major work. Nordstrom wouldn't look at moving to a city until we got to 750,000 people. Neiman Marcus wouldn't look at a city until we got to a million people. Virtually every building you see out those windows wasn't here in the early 90s. Still, amidst the excitement and newness, there are a few drawbacks for Hebaj like being away from his two older children back in New York, or the limited natural resources. We don't have a lot of water, we're in the desert. We also don't have tuna swimming in the sea next to us, and we don't have great farms. So things are, are brought into here, flowed in, driven in, etc.
this area didn't exist 10 years ago. I mean, there wasn't much here. Las Vegas has so little land left, but there's construction everywhere. Real estate investor and consultant Eric Fernwood has spent more than a decade in Las Vegas. Las Vegas has a tremendous land shortage. And based on that, you have a situation where you have an ever-increasing population bidding on a fixed supply. That's what attracted me. More than 80% of the land in Nevada is federally owned. And in Clark County, that number is even higher. Las Vegas can refer to the Las Vegas Valley, the Las Vegas Strip, or the city itself. They all lie within Clark County. Despite having a Las Vegas zip code, the Vegas Strip isn't located within Las Vegas city limits. It's split between the unincorporated towns of Paradise and Winchester. Las Vegas has its city limits that stop at the beginning of the Strip, Sahara Avenue. Casino operators intentionally were outside the city. They didn't want to deal with city taxes and fees. Technically, when you're on the Strip, you are literally in Paradise, Paradise Township. Excluding the Strip, Las Vegas has sprawled development outwards rather than upwards, eating up the limited public land. The result is that land is very expensive here. Hebaj experienced this firsthand when buying his home in 2022. We had to overbid for this house to buy it. And that was the situation all throughout Vegas. And even now, it seems like there's a tight grip on the housing market. But what may be a struggle for home buyers and renters is of course an asset for investors. We have maybe 180, 190 uh, clients and our repeat business rate is in the high 90%. So they continually buy properties because they're making money. In December 2023, home prices rose 11.7% compared to the same month the year prior. This is an area called Green Valley. This is probably one of the best investment locations there is in town. Master plan communities like Summerlin, where Hebodge lives, remain a popular investment. But rising home prices, interest rates, and inflation have made renting more cost effective than buying, which in turn has driven up rental prices as well. The area had an overall apartment occupancy rate of 88.5% in January 2024. Nevada's lack of rent control policies give more power to landlords and investors. The thing that really attracts people here is the closets. Las Vegas is very much a blue collar town and one of the top industries is construction, ranking first among metro areas. Jobs drive everything. At the end of the day, if you're not working, you're not paying rent. I can't see Wind Casino saying, Bad week last week, we're shutting the doors. It's just not gonna happen. As Las Vegas hopes to draw more travelers from around the globe, there's been massive investment into growing what the city is most known for, its casino resorts. A wave of new hotel construction projects in 2024 total more than $534 million in value. How much energy, water, and materials should a city of two million people use? And what if the city is located in a hot and dry desert, like Las Vegas in the Mojave Desert? Water scarcity is a constant battle in desert cities like Las Vegas, Palm Springs, Phoenix, Cairo, and Dubai. Luckily, Las Vegas manages it more efficiently than others. Southern Nevada is one of the few places on Earth that recycles all indoor water on a community-wide scale at a staggering rate of 99%. Hotels like the Bellagio have their own wells, and recent legislation targeting new residential and commercial development limits the size of pools and bans the installation of grass. There is a risk if we continue to have out of control rapid growth for the next 20, 30 years. The next 10 years are probably safe, but at some point it gets really serious. Still, ongoing drought and climate change conditions continue to affect the region's water sources. But water isn't the only climate issue plaguing the area. Las Vegas is one of the fastest warming cities in the U.S. The region faces something called the urban heat island effect, which is where a city absorbs and traps the sun's radiation and in return can't cool down. The city becomes like a baking oven. And to avoid this, we must have the right materials, the right reflective colors. White buildings obviously are much better than black buildings. There's a theory that the state symbol should be the orange traffic cone. So we often are not doing enough to stop and think about what the development should be and what it needs. As the Las Vegas suburbs have developed, many have followed an urban sprawl model. Experts urge the city to become more walkable, which would decrease pollution and help manage more space for the growing population. We don't have 
continuous shade that makes walking pleasant and, and safe. And all, all year long, the city needs to be more compact, but also mixed use. Separately, the city's expanding event and attraction scene raises a crucial question. Is the existing workforce equipped to manage the increased workload? Staffing struggles are a huge issue. Almost every cook I have works two jobs because there's that much demand, so they take it. Job vacancies can be blamed in part on the COVID-19 pandemic, the effects of which are still felt nationwide. Since November 2020, the leisure and hospitality industry has experienced the highest quit rate of all industries. That number is even higher in the food services subsector. This especially hurts Las Vegas, whose economy is largely dependent on those industries. Tourism and hospitality support 32% of jobs in the region. People come to Las Vegas as visitors expecting a level of service that they may not expect in other places. Additionally, the pandemic exposed the perils of a one-sector economy. COVID should have taught us a lesson that we should have learned during the Great Recession, that we should have learned in the wake of 9-11. We have not diversified our economy to the extent that it can insulate us or help insulate us to some degree when there is a national or international event that affects tourism. 173 casinos in Clark County reported a combined net loss of $742.5 million in the 12-month period ending on June 30th, 2021. The hospitality industry's singularity leaves Las Vegas vulnerable to the next devastating event. Hospitality is dominant, and that's a Nevada tradition, if you will. Nevada's lack of income tax means less money is diverted to school revenue. The state's public schools are the most poorly funded in the country and second worst in the nation when it comes to quality. The public schools out of Vegas don't, don't have a great reputation, and it's sad uh, that it's like that because, you know, Vegas has the opportunity to grow for families as well. Hebaj's daughter, Junie, got into her charter school through the lottery system. But that chance isn't afforded to everyone, of course. For children not yet in school, the state's lack of accessible and affordable child care programs has left Nevada in a child care desert, a huge problem as the city needs to attract workers. The region's underdeveloped public transportation options pose another major obstacle. Public transportation isn't great. It's a little difficult for some of my staff, you know, getting to work, especially near the Strip. As of January 2024, the Las Vegas Valley remains the only large metro region in the Mountain West without a developed light rail system. But changes are coming, and federal funding is being allocated to new projects. The city is young, at only 118 years old, and it's constantly evolving. Many say the sky's the limit. We are a city where good ideas are attractive. It just people want to do great things in Las Vegas. Being able to provide a path where local governments and everybody involved can say yes, You're getting the obstacles moved out of the way, is really how Las Vegas has worked and how it's going to continue to grow. For Hebaj, that's reason enough to stay. That's it. I plan on being here in five years. The growth in Vegas is going to be there. And my hope is to open up more restaurants out here. And Vegas just loves to reboot constantly. We blow up buildings and we build new ones right on top. And I don't see that stopping. 